Hey everyone, it's Kirk here again at Option Alpha. So in this video, I wanna show you the new zero DT fade decay or time decay research that we put together. But I also am gonna show you how you can take advantage of this new research by using it inside of your bots and automations. So recently our team put together some research where we collected 30 days worth of minute level data on SPX spreads. So there's a lot of data, a lot of analysis that we put together. And we did this because we were curious about what happens to time decay or theta decay for zero DT contracts specifically. So if you're a regular trader, you might have heard about theta decay. Obviously, if you're a premium seller, you know what theta decay or time decay is. And so this is a look at just generally conceptually what normal time decay looks like for normal contracts, just so we can get kind of like a base frame of reference here. And so you have the value of the contract and you can see as the time until expiration starts to near, the value of the contract will just go down and down and down and down. And this is called theta decay or time decay until you reach the actual expiration date. So for normal option contracts where you're 90 days, 60 days, 30 days out, you have this theta decay or time decay curve. And what's interesting about this is that if you look at this time decay curve for normal option contracts, where you're generally trading monthly contracts or 45, 60 days out, you get the fastest decay in the later part of the expiration cycle. So you're not getting a lot of time decay in the 90 days, you know, 60 days, 70 days, 80 days. You get a little bit of theta decay there, but the contract still has a lot of time until expiration, which makes logical sense. So it's not gonna lose all of its value when it still has 60, 70, 80 days to go. So this is for a normal contract, right, where you're trading further out and you get most of that acceleration just in the last couple of days. So our hypothesis was, you know, what happens for zero DT contracts? Because we don't trade zero DT, DT contracts over 90 days. We're usually entering the trade in the morning or the afternoon. Some people are generally entering these contracts in the morning, assuming that the time decay happens evenly and logically and linearly throughout the rest of the trading day. So we were curious to find out basically what happened. So like I said, we actually analyzed about 30 days worth of SPX one minute level data. And so these are some of the charts that kind of came out of that research that we'll publish. Again, the link is right below here in the video if you want to take a look at it. But I'm going to go through it here. So the first thing that we looked at is we looked at prices of $5 wide SPX short put spreads that were 10 points out of the money. So the reason that we did this looking at spreads specifically is because SPX is a large product and it's really unrealistic for traders to trade spreads naked or undefined risk, right? You're not going to sell an SPX 10 point out of the money spread as a small or individual contract as a small trader. You're going to do a spread and likely you're going to do a five or 10 point wide spread where you can kind of control your risk. So we wanted to specifically look at spreads and the value of spreads to see if there is some sort of time decay that happens and when it happens and what that curve looks like over the zero DT timeframe. So this is a look at the spread values and then in the middle here, this red line is kind of the average price. And what's interesting about this, I think, is that if you look at the time of day, and again, this is all happening in one single trading day, kind of you know summarizing everything that happens for a slightly out of the money spread that's not at the money. What you see here is that generally speaking, the contract actually holds its value for a good part of the day. I mean, you get a little bit of time decay, a little bit of theta decay in that contract as it goes through the day. So from 9.30 in the morning, when you uh, like look at the prices of these spreads until about 12, 12.30 or so, you generally get a little bit of decay in value, but it's not a lot. And that's what I think is very interesting because what I've seen a lot of traders do and some people post about it is that they generally are trying to get into these positions early in the day, thinking that the time decay is more linear, that the decay of the actual spreads and contracts happens more linear because it's just throughout the day. But we actually didn't see that in the research. We saw that it actually follows kind of eerily similar to the regular normal time decay curve that we just saw, it follows more of an exponential path where it starts to accelerate very rapidly into the close of the actual end of the day. And so if you look at this here again, you can see basically from about 9.30 to 12, 12.30 or so, maybe that's like 
like very similar to maybe the 90 day time frame that we looked at on the last chart. And then you get to this next grouping from maybe say 1230 in the afternoon to a little bit later. Maybe that's about, you know, 60, 30 days. But it's really not until you get to about 330 in the afternoon. So the last 30 minutes of the trading day where you actually start to see time decay and the premium of these spreads just fall off a cliff. I mean, it literally looks like they fall off a cliff, like the ball is rolling downhill and then at some point it just falls off a cliff. And maybe that's because at the end of the day, they know or you know traders know, you know the realization is starting to happen that we're getting to the end of the closing bell and the premium is just not there. The position's either there in the money or not in the money, it's close or it's not close. And so premium starts to fall off a cliff. And so this is what's very interesting is that premium is not linear for zero DT contracts. It doesn't go just down, down, down all day in equal step increments. No, it actually has more of an exponential type curve that starts to happen as it goes throughout the trading day. So if you're entering positions, say 12 to 12.30 or before in this time period, you're not gonna get a lot of premium decay. In fact, you're not gonna get much premium decay if you get any at all. And it's not until you get into the later half of the day, specifically at about 3.30 in the afternoon or later, that you get that really, really fast accelerated premium decay. Now, we also took a look at some in the money spreads as well, just because we wanted to do some good research on this and just think to ourselves, okay, is it just happening for out of the money spreads or do we see this same type of activity occur for in the money spreads where we can actually track and see, does the position go from whatever value it's at now to full value? And, and does it retain that or does it behave differently for in the money? So in this case, what we did here is we looked at again, $5 wide spreads in uh, SPX. These are zero DT contracts, so they expire the same day. And these ones on the other hand are 10 points in the money. So last time in the last chart, we looked at out of the money spreads, that will be your typical option selling, premium selling position. These ones here are 10 points in the money. And what we see again here is we generally see about the same thing happen, which is around 9.30 to about 12.30 or so, you really don't get that much movement in the value of the contract. Now the market could be moving a lot, which is very interesting here. And in a 30 day time period, the market does obviously move a lot, but the spreads on average don't really move that much because there's still a lot of time to go. The market has the whole rest of the day to trade. So what we see is we see premium become really sticky and it doesn't really move even if the market's moving an insane amount until you get closer to the end of the day. So again, what happens here is about 3, 3.30 or so when the market starts to near expiration. So in this time block here, you can start to see the rapid acceleration in this case, since it's an in the money spread of the position going to its full value, which in this case would be $5. So it goes much higher up in the last kind of 30 minutes or so of the trading day. Now, also we took a look at, at the money spreads. So we took a look at not only out of the money positions, not only in the money positions, but also zero uh, short put spreads that were literally at the money. So trading contracts that were right where the market was at the open. These were even more interesting to me because these ones showed for sure that they were even more sticky than the other ones that we had looked at, both the out of the money and in the money uh, category here. You can see that these contracts basically held their value the entire trading day. It wasn't until really the last 15 minutes of the trading day, did it finally flip from one side to the other? <clears throat> so this is interesting because what you would have is that if you're trying to, you know, get into a position where you're trying to take advantage of a market directional play or something like that, you're more likely to have that position hold its value pretty much the entire day until it gets to the actual closing bell. And then again, in the last 15 minutes for these at the money spreads, that's when the, the value of these contracts either went down or went up or whatever the case is. Um, and because we had a little bit of positive drift, most of the values went down as we got into the close, but it could have easily gone the other, other direction depending on how you're playing it. Now, the last thing that we did in this research is we took a look at one specific day. And there's a lot that we can glean from this particular analysis. This was looking at Black Monday. Black Monday was back in August 5th of this year. If you might remember it, it was basically when the market, just for a little bit of time, we had some volatility, which kind of came back in, which was nice. 
Uh, but the markets were going crazy on the yen carry trade, you know, unwinding or stuff like that. And for a moment in time, we had the markets down really big and kind of pre-market trading. Markets opened up three, four percent down, depending on the different indexes, and then kind of rallied throughout the rest of the day. But we did track those specific prices for that entire day. It's just kind of like one snapshot into one very volatile day. What we learned about uh, specifically out of the money spreads in SPX, and again, these were the 10 points out of the money spreads, so a little bit below where the market was, is obviously we start to see, and this is interesting just because it's a, a very volatile day, that we start to see bid-out spreads insanely wide for the front half of the morning. I mean, so from 9.30 until about 11.30, you can see that the spreads in these positions were a mile wide. I mean, zero to $8 for a $5, 10 point wide spread. It's just a mile wide because the markets were trying to figure out what was generally happening. So the spreads themselves were very wide. If you look at the actual mid price of these, this will be the, the green line here. You can see that the mid price, even for that day, was actually fairly consistent for most of the day. So although the bid ask spreads were pretty wide, the mid price was still kind of around, a, you could call it a normal-ish range, but we did not see a lot of decay on that volatile day until basically the end of the trading day. So what this tells us is that if there is a lot of volatility in the market for the market open or that particular day, you're likely to see zero DTE contracts hold their value much further into the trading session. So likely till the end of the trading session, essentially. So this is you know very interesting for two reasons. One is that if you're thinking that you can get into a zero DTE position early in the morning, and then you get some quick decay you know, by noon and then you're out, it's probably not likely gonna happen. And alternatively, if you're thinking about getting into a zero DT position, maybe you might wanna get into those positions slightly later in the day. You don't feel rush or pressure to get into a position early in the morning because you know that it's gonna hold most of its value. You're not gonna get a lot of decay until you get towards the later hours of the trading session. So. Now the question is, okay, how can we take advantage of this? Now that we know this, how can we like, essentially program this and tell our bots and automations to take advantage of this? Well, there's two ways you can do it. So number one is inside of any automation that you're running, in this case, it could be a zero DTE, what I would call in this example, a late day scanner. What you could do is use a decision or a conditional step to only continue down the path of opening a position if the market time is after a certain time in the afternoon. Now, you could start something at 3.30 in the afternoon or 3.15 or whatever time kind of works for you. But in this example, I said, look, you know, if we know that decay really starts to accelerate at 3.30, maybe we start our scanning process at 3 or 3.15, something like that. You be the judge of how you want to do it in your particular bot. But if you do it at 3.30, you're just really kind of running up against the barrier. You've only got a little bit of time. So if you do want to start a little bit earlier, in this example, I might start at 3 o'clock. So I get a little bit of time to let the bot try to find a position that meets all my criteria. That's how you would do it here. So essentially for most of the trading day for this zero DT scanner, it's not going to be market time after 3 o'clock. It's only when it's market time after 3 o'clock is it gonna start trying to find a uh, position, like an SPX zero DT position. You can also do some pretty cool stuff in here, like obviously filtering for different position criteria. And this is what I would do where you're letting the bot kind of find that position, filter out anything that doesn't have good risk reward metrics or good spreads or whatever the case is, any of these criteria that you fill in, just gives the bot a little bit more time to find those types of positions for you. Now that's one way you can do it. You can do it inside the automation itself. The other way that you can do it, and they both work and function is essentially the same, is inside of your automation settings. When you're running an automation, you don't have to include that actual decision for is it after three o'clock. You can just actually run your automations at different times. So you can say, I wanna run this particular automation at let's say three o'clock or after, right? And so now inside of the automation settings, you can say, three o'clock or after, that's when I want to run this automation. Don't even think about running it earlier in the day. But if you do have different types of criteria that you look for, or different types of positions you might want to find earlier in the day, you can use the decision or conditional block inside the automation itself. It's really up to you how you kind of want to use it and play around with it for your particular bot. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this new research. Again, the link to it is right below. If you did, let us know, add a comment or like. 
and share this video for uh, to other traders that you know, help spread the word about what we're doing here at Option Alpha. And until next time, happy trading.